This is a nice intro transition from yesterday's expansion technique to the uh, formula method that we're going to look at today. It says find the term containing x cubed in it from the expansion 2x to the fifth, 2x to the fourth, 2x to the third, 2x to the second, 2x to the first, 2x to the zero. Then I'm going to take the negative y to the zero, negative y to the one, negative y squared, negative y cubed. Notice all the powers add up to five. And then now we need to put those um, values in. Okay, I know this is one and I know this is going to be a five. This one's a little tough. I'll show you a quick way to do it without doing the triangle. Do five choose two. Let's see what happens. What's that, Allie? Oh, sure. Let me show you. So one of the things you're going to learn as a pattern comes up that this this thing here is 5 choose 0, or 5 factorial over 0 factorial over 5 factorial. What is 5 factorial over 5 factorial over 0 factorial? 1. Good. The next one here is going to be 5 choose 1. 5 factorial over 1 factorial over 4 factorial. And do you know what 5 factorial over 4 factorial is? It's 5, yep. Uh, how about 5 choose 2? 5 factorial over 2 factorial over 5 minus 2 is 3 factorial. And this is going to be 5 times 4 times 3 factorial over 2 factorial and 3 factorial. These cancel out. What's 20 divided by 2? 10. And then this is going to also be 10. This is going to be 5, and this is going to be 1. Now, we did this yesterday, Allie. We went 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And what will the next row be? 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. But do you see how this works? Yeah. Right now, this is fine. Pascal's is the way to go. All right, so then now we got to do the actual multiplying out. How many of you think you got this part figured out? Good. So then this is actually the hardest part. 2 to the fifth is 32x to the fifth. This is negative y or negative. 2 to the fourth is 16. Do you know what 16 times 5 is real quick? What's 16 times 10? 16 times 10? 160. Divide by, or, uh, divide by 2? 80. That's how you multiply by 5. So you get 80 x to the 4th. Okay? And times y. The next one is going to be 2 cubed is 8 times 10 times positive 1 is positive 80 x cubed y squared. And then the next one is going to be uh, negative cubed is a negative 4 times 10 is 40, x squared, y cubed. And then we have 2 times 5 is 10, positive, 10xy to the 4th. And then the last is just going to be negative y to the 5th. The question reads, what is the term containing x cubed? All right. So which term has it? The first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, or the sixth? Third one, yeah. This is it. Now, how many of you like doing that? all that work? You did? No. Oh, you did. Okay. Well, it's kind of a cool pattern. I love patterns in math. But wouldn't it be nice if you didn't have to do all this work? That would be so great. So we're going to come up with a formula today that says if you want to find the nth, nth term, 
here's what you do. You take n choose j, a to the n minus j times b to the j. And n is the power. So the power in this case is what? 2x minus y to the what power? What power is this thing? 5. So you go 5. And um, this is a little tricky part. We're going to get good at it today. Is you take the power of y. If this is my x cubed, the power of y is what here? 2. Yeah. Power of y is 2. So this is going to be 2. A is the first part. That's a. 2x to the 5 minus 2. And then y is the second part, negative y, to the 2. And 5 choose 2, we said, was 10. 2 to the third is 8x cubed. Negative 1 squared is, is positive 1y squared. How does this one compare to this? It's the same. So that's what we're going to do today. All right, so we're going to uh, see how this formula comes out. Remember when we did a plus b to the n? You want to do the descending a. a to the n, a to the n minus 1. That a just gets smaller all the way to 0. What did the b do? Ascends b to 0, b to the 1, b to the second, all the way to b to the n. That part didn't change. The part that was weird was the Pascal's triangle, right? And what we're doing, and we just kind of showed, is that you can make a combination, power choose 0, power choose 1, power choose 2, and so on, all the way to n choose n. Now, what are we starting that bottom number out at? 1 or 0? Zero. Here's the little only glitch in this whole thing is we're would you circle that? We're starting at zero. Now if you're going to the third term and you start at zero, what power are you going to end up at? Two, right? If you're starting at zero and you go to the fifth term, what are you going to end up at? Four. If you're at the uh, sixth term or the seventieth term, it's always going to be one less, right? For that power. So this j value is going to be the term minus 1, and it's all because we start at 0. Normally we go 1, 2, 3, right? So the third term is 3, fifth term is 5. But when you start at 0, you don't, you don't, those don't match up one less than the term. And so then it's just n choose j, a to the n minus j, that's my descending term b to the j. So if it's the fifth term of, you know, x plus y to the twelfth, you could figure this out. You would go 12, choose, well, it's the fifth term, what will j be? 4. Power of y will be 4. And then you just go uh, x to the 12 minus 5, that's the descending x, and y to the, I said 5, 4 I mean, y to the 4. And so whatever 12 choose 4 is, I'm sure it's a lovely number, x to the 8th, y to the 4th. So let's try a couple. Go to these examples, and um, how many of you think this formula is going to be nice? It is a really nice formula, it's just weird to get used to. Okay, find the sixth term for x plus 2 to the 10th. So below here, I want you to get used to listing these out. What's the power of the binomial? 10. And it's the sixth term, right? So what's j? j is 5. Because we start at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You're going to end up at 5. a is the first part. So A is going to be X. What's B going to be? 2. Yep. There's your B. Okay. So then you just go ahead and use the formula, which is N choose J. 
a to the n minus j, b to the j. So it's 10 choose 5, and then it's x to the 10 minus 5. That will get you your descending x. And then it's 2 to the 5th. And I need your calculator for this next one. So if I pull up the calculator here, oh, I already had the answer. We want to do 10 choose 5. So 10, then hit math. There's columns here. Move over to probability. Go the NCR, which is number 3. And then choose 5. 252. Notice the last two digits are what? What are the last two digits? 52. Favorite number. Put that back in. All right. So this is going to be 52, 252, x to the 10 minus 5, 2 to the 5th is 32. Could somebody calculate what's 252 two times 32? 252, 8,060. Oh, 64? Okay. And there we didn't have to actually expand it, and then find that sixth term. We just use the formula to do it. Feeling okay? Feels okay? All right. Well, now we're going to do the same thing, except it's going to be a little bit different. It says, for this example, find the coefficient for the term that has an x to the seventh in it. So let's see what we can find from 2x plus 3 to the 11. Uh, what's the 11? What variable is that? And what's a? 2x. So what's 3? B. Good. Now the term is a little tricky, but think of it this way. Put up your um, right hand. Everybody put up your right hand and close your fingers and thumb. And we start out at x to the 11th is the first. So would you put your thumb up for x to the 11th? The next term will be x to the 10th. Then the next term will be x to the ninth, x to the eighth, x to the seventh. What term is that? Fifth. Great way to do it. One more time. The greatest exponent is x to the eleventh. So you go x to the eleventh, x to the ten, nine, eight, seven. That's going to be five terms. What's j going to be? Five minus one because we start at zero. So it's going to be four. All right. So it's eleven. Choose Four, and it's 2x to the 11 minus 4 times 3 to the 4. I'll need your help. What's 11 choose 4 in your calculator? Three thirty. Yeah. Anybody second that? Good. And it's 2 to the, what is that, 7th? I think 2 to the 5th is 32, 6 is 64, 7th is 128, and then 3 to the 4th is 81 times x to the 7th. Okay? With your calculators, what's 330 times 128 times 81? It's going to be big. Anybody second that? Is that it? Good. So there's your answer. That's the coefficient. This is the coefficient in blue of the x to the seventh term. Isn't that neat? So now we're ready. Go and here's the formula. Here's a um, here's a problem. 